All right, so we're going to start off the fourth video here by wiring the inverter board we set up last time to the circuit board. So the way we've set this up is on the left side of the table, off the screen a little bit, we've got the inverter board laying face up. Uh, so the solder joints we made in the last video are down against the table. So the wires are poking out towards the right where we've got the circuit board set up like you can see on the screen. So the wires that you can see should be at the very top should be a black and then down below that should be the yellow, two reds, and then the bottom black one coming out of the inverter off to the right. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the top black cable coming off the inverter board and I'm soldering it to, if you're looking at it from my perspective, uh, the upper left joint where the 10 pin connector used to sit on the circuit board. So before I got started with this, I you can tell I added a little bit of solder to each joint where the pins used to be, and that's just to make the uh, the wires stick even better. All the wires have also been uh, applied with a little bit of solder beforehand to make sure that the connection is really strong. So after that ground wire is attached, we're going to go ahead and bring the top red wire over and solder that to the connection just to the right of that ground wire. Now when you're doing this, you want to orient the wire in such a way that the solder joints do not connect. Not only the solder joints, but you have to make sure that the rest of the wire, any exposed wiring, uh, doesn't come into contact with the other joint solder. So after we've got that one, we're going to take the lower of the two red wires and solder that to the joint just below the first one. So those two wires, like I said in the last video, just tell the screen when to turn on and off. And so that's going to control whether or not your backlights actually turn on when you press the power button. Then you can see that I've taken the yellow wire, that's the 12 volt line, and I've soldered that to the middle left connector. That's going to be the 12 volts going from the screen, I mean, excuse me, from the circuit board to the inverter board. And I actually desoldered the two uh, red wires because I forgot to solder the other ground wire. So instead of risking the chance of burning through the insulation on the other two, I just went ahead and desoldered them. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put them back in the exact same order before. They were fine. They were just in the way because I forgot about the other ground wire. So now that I've got everything back together the way it should be, go ahead and spin it around and so you can see that all the connections are nice and separate, no overlap or anything. And so we can go ahead and that'll allow us to lay the wires down a little bit more so that we can make this as flat as possible. So now that we're done soldering the two boards together, we can go ahead and zoom out and take a look at what it's supposed to be looking like around now. Uh, what I'm doing is just uh, taking the wires and uh, finding places amidst the circuitry on the board to lay them down in, uh, trying to make everything, as you've heard a million times by now, as thin as possible. Um, if you end up with wires that are too long or too short or whatever, it's not a big deal to extend or shorten them at this point. Uh, you've got all the solder joints figured out where everything needs to be going so trimming and extending wires is not a big deal you can go ahead and do that as you need to So after trimming some wires, uh, getting everything down to size, you can see that everything's having a much easier time laying down uniformly and that it just looks nicer overall. A nice little neat package always makes it easier to figure out what you did wrong and compare it to this right here to make sure that you did everything right. Next up, we're going to be wiring the three wires, the ground, the 12 volt, and the 5 volt that are going to run down through the lid and into the case to connect up with the 360 power supply. 
So yellow again indicating 12 volts. We're going to go ahead and solder that to the joint right next to the original yellow wire. And these wires, I would recommend making them anywhere between two and three feet long. Uh, no harm in making them too long. We can go ahead and trim them later, but you're going to be in a world of hurt if they're too short. The red wire indicating the five volts is going to go right below that last yellow one in the fourth pin down on the right. And then the very last of the ground can go in either of the bottom two, but I like keeping everything in a line, making it nice and easy for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it in the bottom right. So at this point, we should have our three wires, our ground 5 volt and 12 volt, ready to snake on down through the case and connect up with the power supply. And like always, I'm just going to try to lay the wires down here, get them as close to the board as possible, run them around the cap wires, just keep them laid down as close as we can to the board. So next what we're going to do is we're going to be wiring up the VGA port by hand. So what you're going to need to do this is another set of probably two to three foot wire. Uh, I would recommend doing two wires in one color, six in another, and three in a final color. I'm doing two yellow, three red, and six black. That first wire that I just put down there is representing the vertical sink, and it's actually in the second solder joint from the left in the bottom row. And in the next joint, right next to that one, to the right, is going to be the horizontal sink. So those are going to take care of our two yellow wires. And then we're going to move on to the black, which is the ground. The entire middle row is going to be ground. And then uh, the joint in the top left of the top row is also going to be black. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward through that. Now you can see we've got all the ground wires in place, so we're going to go ahead and take care of the three red wires, which are going to represent the red, green, and blue. So first we're going to do the blue, which is going to be the middle solder joint on the top row. Next to that, to the right, is going to be the green. And then finally, the top right solder joint is going to be red. And so these are all going to be need to be individually labeled. Uh, I would recommend taking uh, pieces of masking tape, wrapping them around the opposite ends of the wires, and then going ahead and labeling them uh, red, green, blue, and then vertical sink and horizontal sink. The grounds don't matter. We know that as long as you did color code them, in my case, all of the blacks are going to be ground, so we don't need to uh, mark them specifically. Just remember whichever color it is that you used for ground. And if you manage to get all that right, then congratulations, you're halfway done with your homemade VGA cable. So I went ahead and did a little bit of wire management, taped uh, the wires together to make them manageable and a little neater. And as you can see, I did exactly like I told you. I went ahead and put some masking tape around each of the wires that needed to be labeled and then just took a pen and labeled them. And the point of that is when we put the screen together, we're not going to be able to see this end, so we're going to need to know on the outside which wire needs to go where. So very crucial. Make sure you label everything. Next, we're going to deal with rewiring and relocating the yellow brick slash transformer that I had to remove in the last video. So what I went ahead and already did is cut another two to three foot section uh, two sections of yellow wire and four of red and that'll make it easier for us to distinguish which side of the transformer they need to be attached to. So as you can see I've got the board flipped over uh, so it's upside down and I'm attaching the two similarly colored to the far pins of the transformer and then on the closer side I'm going ahead and attaching 
uh, wires in the first, third, fourth, and sixth solder spots. And if you look at your actual transformer, those pins should correspond. If you flip it over underneath, you should see that there's only wires in those spots and that the other ones are just pins that help it uh, stay attached to the board. They're just stability pins, so they don't actually need to be rewired. So what I've done here is just picked up the transformer and with a pin I've numbered both sides, uh, only the pins that have, uh, that actually matter. So on the far side with the several pins I have one through four, and then on the near side I have one and two. Now if you're watching this now, what you should do is before you tape all the wires together, you should figure out which one's which and masking tape label them accordingly. Unfortunately, I jumped the gun here a little bit and already taped all mine together. So what I'm doing is using the contingency test on the multimeter to try and figure out which wire is which. And when I'm finding the correct wires, I'm going ahead and using my transformer, which is laying upside down there, to mimic the way it should be mounted, using that as reference to figure out which number I should mark it as. So on my red wires, I'm going to end up with having ones labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then on my yellow wires, I'm just going to have 1 and 2. So now that I've finished all my testing, you can see I've got my four red wires labeled one through four, uh, corresponding to each of the four spots on the transformer where they need to be hooked up when everything's said and done. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the two yellow wires as well. Like I said, this process is made a lot easier and you don't need a multimeter if you don't tape things together before you should. So after these yellow ones are done, uh, we're going to be done for this video. So uh, congratulations again for finishing another installation of how to make your own x-top and we'll see you in the next video